All right, so in this video, we're gonna put ourselves to the test because RV life sometimes means getting out of your comfort zone and that is exactly what we're gonna be doing. Yes, and we're gonna be handy today. So you're gonna have to stay tuned because we're gonna share some more information as far as what we're doing, why we're doing it, and some tips and tricks when it comes to all things RV refrigerator related. So you're gonna wanna watch this one. The refrigerator we have in this RV is the absorption style fridge that runs off of propane and electric and it's worked okay. Okay, the propane when we're on travel days doesn't really work that great. The biggest problem I still think that we run into is that on travel days, the kids are constantly opening and closing the fridge and that's letting all the cold air out. And then that fridge, I monitor it and it gets up to like 50 yeah. degrees, which is not really safe for food. We've looked at doing a ton of different options, a direct replacement, replacing it with a 12 volt. The biggest problem that we've run into with this particular rig is that there's no guarantee that when you go to get a replacement refrigerator that it's going to fit right into that same area perfectly without any sort of modifications, which is just a whole nother can of worms. Right. <laughs> and level of difficulty that we don't feel comfortable attacking on our own. There can be some safety aspects with yes. propane as well, especially yeah. on you, travel days. You're not technically supposed to have it on or in the fridge when, when you're you, driving down the road. Or especially when you fill up at a fuel station. Right. Like that's another issue yeah. that is a whole thing. So. 12 volt, baby. What we're going to attempt to do is convert our existing fridge to a compressor driven 12 volt fridge using the conversion kit from JC Refrigeration. We're excited and also a little nervous because this is going to require a lot of things of us that we have not done, nor are we super technical. So anyway, wish us luck. First step is we need to shut off the propane completely because we're going to completely cap off the propane where it goes into the fridge because this fridge will no longer be propane anymore. Right, all right, so let's shut her off. So on our Class A diesel, it's right under here. And then here's the <laughs> shut off. So go ahead and shut it off, Mr. D. Uh, why is it hard? There you there go. go. All right, shut off. On the destructions. Oh my goodness, Ben. What? Is it's it like, thick? It's like a big, it's like a Bible. This is like <gasps> a family Bible <laughs> of instructions. This is a lot of papers. Oh, we can do this. We got this. Growth mindset. High five. Growth mindset. Here we go. This has a three year warranty on it. Just from the factory, you can also purchase an extended three years for a total of a six year warranty, if that's something that you're interested in. I pulled out this because what I really wanna find is the tool list so that we can get all the tools that we need because the first step's gonna be removing the refrigerator out of the RV and then essentially peeling back the cooling unit that's on it, replacing it with this cooling unit, hooking it up and reinstalling the fridge. So it sounds simple enough. We're gonna get started. So this is where we start uh, taking off wires. So we've got our instructions. Pretty sure we know what we're doing. We did pull the fuse inside just in case that we did anything wrong. We didn't like short out the system, blow the fuse, make sure there's no power, all of that. So Ben will be getting the shock of his life. Yeah, it'll be a shocking experience. All right. Ha. All right. And, and we're gonna take out the ice maker now because this is a good opportunity to do that because we don't use it. We don't use it. So. it creates more freezer space. So, yeah. all right, now we got to disconnect all the things. Wish us luck. I know. Let's see, all right. You got both of those? Yep. Okay. We got the wires disconnected. And the next step is gonna actually be to disconnect the propane now. JC Refrigeration includes all of the parts that you need, including a cap to cap off the propane line. So. Ben's going to uh, disconnect that. There's instructions on how to do that and then install the cap. So we'll just cap off the propane and we won't have to worry about the fire hazard that these things can sometimes be because we won't have a propane fridge anymore. Yay! Mm -hmm. All right, so I put a wrench right here, press a wrench and then I put one here, 
<laughs> Jesus help. Ugh. All right, loosened it. Ow. <laughs> Ow. You need one of those signs. Scrape myself like a little bit. Busted right. knuckle garage. All right. Now we've got the plug. We're just gonna screw this guy into here. Okay, so we have the screws removed on the other side of the fridge, and then the next step's gonna be removing the mounting screws that hold this in place and actually pulling it out and then kind of sliding it over so we can work on the back side of this. Um, it's like a little bug. I'm gonna try to be super careful because we did have all of these repainted as part of our renovation. So I'm gonna get some blankets, just some things to make sure that everything's protected on this fridge as we go to remove it. And hopefully it's not super heavy. We do have kind of a plan B that we can go to if we need to on the reinstall because I have a feeling this is gonna be pretty heavy and while Ben is Mr. Muscles, I am not. So we'll let you know if we go to plan B on the reinstall and you'll see that just a little bit later in this video. fridge out. We have a nice gaping hole here behind me where the fridge used to be. And the nice thing about this is, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, this is going to eliminate having to worry about will a new fridge be an exact fit for the hole that's here without having to modify anything. So right now, Ben is cutting the tape and basically what's gonna happen is this whole backside of the fridge, which is the cooling unit, is going to completely come off and then the new cooling unit, which is sitting outside at the moment, will come back on. So that's kind of how this works. It's actually fairly simple when you think about just how this whole system works. This is significantly a cheaper solution than a new fridge, then even if you get a new cooling unit from Norcold and keep the absorption style, it's still five or 600 bucks. This new unit from JC Refrigeration is only around $1,300. So when you look at the cost comparison, it's a much better solution. Plus this way we're able to kind of recycle in a way as far as we're keeping the fridge case. So it's something that's not going into the landfill, which is just kind of nice from an environmental perspective. We're not adding more into our landfills with stuff like this. So it's coming together. And uh, the next part will be once that we get the new cooling unit on and getting all the wiring put back together, that'll be the next hurdle to overcome. So stay tuned. Yep. Oh, that's you missed right. the tape. Yeah. Uh, so just hold on, hold on. It's okay to go help with the top part. Okay, so fridge is out, cooling units removed, backsides cleaned up. Following our instructions, we're on page 20, I don't know, I think we're like halfway through. The electrical unit, like the control unit, you don't use the old one, they have the new one. So we're about ready to put that in and then go on to the next step. But we're making decent progress here. Hopeful, hopeful. So let's get that new control unit in. Next step is what's called thermal mastic. Now the nice thing about this kit is that they literally include everything that you need except for like tools. So. This particular thermal mastic, it basically is like a substance that goes on the back side that conducts um, like the cooling unit stuff, the, the coolness. I don't know, how do you say that? It's cooling. super cool. Anyway, so that goes on next uh, before that we put the new unit on the back of the fridge. So we're getting closer. You know, they watch the roof. The cool thing is they really put this together very well. All the fins are more efficient. Okay, 
careful of that compressors. metal piece huh? there. What? You almost hit the upper cabinet with that metal piece because it's... No, other side. Yeah, see? Did I hit it? I can see it from this bottom side. It looks like he scrapes it a little on the bottom side. That was from something else, though. All right. No, this isn't metal. No, other side. Huh? Oh, did I hit it with this? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Dang it. Yeah. Ah, another blemish. Another blemish. In the books. Mm. All right. Okay. This is where we need to work together. All right. Got it. Awkward. Right? Ready? One, two, and three. Oh. Oh. Yep, we're still good. We're still pretty much mostly on the rug. Close enough on the rug. All right, so now the fridge is upright and we're just screwing the cooling unit to the back of the fridge from the inside of the fridge. So right now, Ben is screwing on the, um, like the fins that go on the inside of the fridge. We've got the back of the freezer attached. So after this step, we uh, move on to some electrical. So wish us luck. Okay, so the next step is to use the great stuff. Easy shooter. Wow. So we're getting ready to put the fridge back in the compartment. We have the wiring done on the back, hopefully correctly, because the last step will be to plug it in power, but you're not supposed to do that till we have an upright end in the compartment. So when we were researching this project to make sure that we felt confident in handling it, we did see where somebody else that had done this install before used a floor jack to kind of jack the fridge up because our fridge doesn't just sit like on the floor. There's a drawer underneath it. So it has to be lifted up and into the compartment that it sits into. And I am not going to win any medals for weightlifting probably ever in my life. <laughs> so um, this is hopefully a way that we can kind of jack it up a little bit to be able to kind of get it on that same level that we need it to scooch it back in. So. Ben's putting together the floor jack. We're getting ready to put it back into the compartment. Um, this project so far has probably taken us about seven hours, but there's been breaks in there. And if we weren't filming as we went, it, we could have gotten it done probably a little bit quicker, but we wanted to show you guys. So anyway, um, that's the next step. We're getting ready to put on this floor jack, hopefully, and slide it in fairly easy. And then after we've got it in, then power and hopefully everything just powers up the way it's supposed to and we did everything right. We're gonna find out. Time to get jacked. It's in, it's the in. bottom lips in, but the it's jack in. fell off. Did the bottom lip make? Oh, it did. It did. Oh my gosh, we got lucky on that. We got so lucky. It, that's crazy. That is crazy. It wasn't. Holy cow. All right. It would have made it, you know, if Norfolk would have put these on some sort of like okay, push. plastic casters, that would have been helpful. Yeah. <laughs> it dropped right onto there, just perfectly. how we planned it. We did it, it's alive, it's alive. We plugged it in. And it's on and it's running, woo hoo. I have never been like so proud of Ben and I. Like, like seriously, I'm dead serious. In just a long time. 
We did it! Is it working? Hit the compressors on outside. Yes! I know! I am so proud of us for just like, you know, pushing past, not feeling comfortable with something, getting outside yeah. of our comfort zone, and just jumping in and being like, you know what, we're gonna try this. And oh, the light just went out. Worst case scenario, like, you know, you have to call in reinforcements, which we had a couple people we could have called if we would have run into problems. JC Refrigeration said we yeah. could call them if we had any issues. We didn't have to make the phone call, you did. Yeah, you know what, their, their instructions were amazing. And they, it came with everything. The great stuff, the connectors. The, the only thing we saw was on the tool list, you needed a wire crimper and it wasn't on yeah. the tool list, but no big deal. Right. So I don't know if you can hear this. It's pretty dang quiet, but it's running. It's in. Now, a couple of things where I am really wishing we would have done this like legit years ago, but this pretty much replaces, like the kit replaces everything. So it's a new control panel. This control panel no longer works. There's no power to it. So that annoying door alarm that happens with the Norcold sometimes, like we don't have to worry about any of this anymore. All new controls, all new circuitry, everything is new. So for the control panel now, it's actually in here. It tells you where you're at for your freezer and your fridge temps, tells you what it's set to as well. And there's a light that comes on when it senses that the door is open. So everything in here, brand new. This actually has fans built in as well. So the other fans that we had in there, we no longer need because this has a built-in fan that essentially kind of does the same job, but it's all built into the new control panel. What does that fan do? What's the the fan keeps the um, air circulating, number one, which just helps keep the fridge cooler. Number two, what that fan does is it helps to keep those friend, friends, friends, those fins from building up ice. So you don't want icy fins because that's a problem. So that'll help to keep those frost free and then just keep everything cooler. So the freezer is now at zero degrees. We can have ice cream again. Yes. In the RV. So excited about that. And then the fridge, I actually watched this thing drop last night on our Govee. Now, quick little side note on the Govee. Absolutely love this to be able to monitor the temperature because if you are struggling with fridge temp, the last thing you wanna do is open the door to check what it says that the temperature is. So this, I can check through the Govee app on my phone and check what it is. I was actually checking it remotely from our home base last night after we set this up to just watch what it was doing. And I will tell you that on travel days when these doors would be open a lot, we would be like at 50 to 55 degrees almost the whole time because it took so long for this thing to recover. It actually wouldn't really fully recover until we were parked at a campground overnight into the next morning was when it would really recover. I watched this thing drop like 30 degrees within a couple of hours last night. It was amazing. So much better efficiency with this thing. So glad we did it. And uh, man, rocking and rolling. Summer's coming. All right, so the last thing that we really need to do to call this job done is to just double check where we capped off that propane line that we don't have any leaks. So turn on the propane, get that double checked and make sure that that's good. And that's it. We're done. Yay, so exciting. Why are you pointing? Tickets to the gun show. What are you pointing at? That way. <laughs> Tickets to the gun show that way. Way to like push your bicep up with your hand. <gasps> Busted. Okay, hold on. Stop, stop. You're doing it wrong. Stop. Do you want to get a match and see if there's no. like propane coming out of there? <laughs> Bad idea. I'm just kidding. Why does this thing in here? Uh, That's a good question. One, two. Three. Okay, hold on. What? How are we going to do this? I don't know. I'm just going to lift this and move that way. So let me tell you, I've got some bad experiences about this stuff, and it's not so great if you're getting it on these hairy arms or on these hands. So, one thing you're gonna wanna make sure you do, don't tell me I didn't warn you. <sighs> tell me I'm pretty and feed me tacos. You're pretty. We have a whole nother video with refrigerator tips for RV absorption refrigerators. So if you've yet to make a mod like this, you're definitely gonna wanna check that out right up here, some great tips. 
if we don't see you out on the road or around the campground, we'll definitely see you in the next video.